Crafters, Lisa here from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you could join me for another Inspiration Friday. So, December is right around the corner. In fact, if you're watching this when I release this video, December 1st is next week. And because of that, I thought it would be fun to put together a countdown to Christmas tree. And so this week's project will be using some reclaimed wood and some doorknobs, and we are gonna create a countdown for Christmas. Great project to put together for the kids or just for you to have as a decoration. So I can't wait to share the project with you. But before we get there, as I do every time, I just wanna thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I appreciate it so much. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe and click on the bell and YouTube should alert you each time I upload a new video. My channel is all about inspiring you to create new things. So I really hope you enjoy my tutorials. So give me a second. I'm going to get my camera angle change. I'm going to meet you back here at the craft table and we are going to start putting together a countdown to Christmas board with doorknobs and reclaimed wood. So to start this project, I had some leftover boards from when I did my reclaimed wall in my craft room. And so I thought that they would be a good start to um, a background for the Christmas tree that I'm going to make out of knobs. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to find a way to put these boards together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them upside down. And what I'm going to do is I am going to apply some wood glue on them. And I am going to put some 2x4s across. Now you can use whatever type of wood you have available. I actually just went out to our garage and I found these um, 2x4s out there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place them as close to the end as possible because when we get to a later step in this project, I want to be able to do the doorknobs to come all the way through. So this is really going to be my workspace on the other side. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this wood glue and I really like this Aleens um, wood glue. It's a super strong, it says it's a sandable wood glue. And so I am just going to put a good amount of that down. And I'm also going to add some nails to this, but I want to start with the wood glue because I think it really helps with the adherence. And we're going to let that dry before we get on to our next step. out of wood glue and that's why I took the lid off so I can get so I'm just going to give a good coat to both sides of the um, ends of the board there and then I'm going to put that in place just feeling to make sure that I've got the end of it, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that dry, and then when I come back, we're gonna put some nails in place to really secure this. Then we're gonna give it a coat of paint, and then we'll get started adding on our doorknobs to make our tree. And here we are, and my wood glue has all dried, and I am using my drill to actually add in some screws. I know in the earlier section I referred to them as nails, but I'm actually putting some wood screws in. And one of the things that you want to make sure of is that you use the correct size of wood screw. So I actually size mine up because I want to make sure they do not go all the way through the board. So I'm just going to go ahead and add three screws on each side. Um, 
of this to make sure it's secured. And then once we have it done, we'll get ready for our next step. And now we're ready to give it a coat of paint. And I like using this Waverly chalk paint. Now this is your decision if you want to paint your background. I thought a farm look with a, a white wash paint would look really nice um, on this board. So as you can see, I'm just opening up my paint and I am just going to lightly brush it. I'm not going to do a complete paint coverage on this. I really want it to look like it's whitewashed. So I'm just going on and I'm really stroking the brush across and not having complete coverage. So you'll see as I, as I finish this, I just add a little bit of paint and I just brush it very easily. Now, keep in mind, if you guys want it to be a complete white background or maybe you want to do a different color, that's your guys' choice. This was just my idea of giving it that rustic look. Now we're going to let our board dry and while we're waiting for it to dry we need to design how we want to put the tree onto the board and of course I've got 25 knobs here and I picked up these knobs from Amazon you guys might be able to find them at a secondhand store or different places it might even be fun to use different colors of knobs but I just thought the red knobs were just really cute. They really went with the inspiration piece that I had saw at Lowe's. So I'm just going to going ahead here and opening up my packages. And what I want to do is I want to start to lay out how I am going to have the knobs on the tree. So here I am, I've got all of my knobs out of the wrappers and I'm kind of using my grid on my Cricut mat here to kind of give me an idea of how I want to space out the 25 knobs. And the one thing nice about using my mat here is it's given me an idea um, inch wise how far apart that my knobs are going to go in reference to how big my board is. So you can see I've got my board laying right next to me so I know what the width of my board is and then I'm laying out and just playing with it. now that I've got an idea on how I want to lay out my knobs, I want to make sure that it is going to fit on my board appropriately. And you guys can see I've taken a piece of white butcher paper and I'm putting it over my board because I'm actually going to create a grid that matches my knobs that I have off to the side. So I'm just using my tape measure and I've done my measurements. Now you guys can definitely just do this without the grid. I just really wanted to make sure all of my knobs are going to fit appropriately because we are going to start drilling some holes in to start um, being able to place the knobs. And so I didn't want to start drilling and then have my 
sizing off. So that's the reason why I'm using this as a template. And you can see I'm just working down and that's one of the reasons why I've got my knobs off to the side. You can see I'm making sure I have the right number of um, dots for the number of rows I'm going to be adding. see I'm just finishing up making sure I have the right number of dots um, for our tree which would be 25 and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab my drill and we're gonna start making starter holes for our knobs and here I am with my drill and I'm starting to make the starter holes for each one of the knobs now I started out with a drill bit that was a little bit too small and so I did end up grabbing a larger drill bit and one of the things with the drill bit what you want to keep in mind is that you are doing a hole that is the same size as the screw for your knob now another thing you want to make sure of is that you be very careful and you don't um, use your drill and drill through to your table. Now keep in mind, I've got the two by fours on the other side, so my board is elevated. But the idea here is, is that we want to create a hole with each, a hole with the drill for each one of our knobs. And then once we've got our pilot holes started, what we're going to do is we're going to flip over the board and we're going to start adding our screws from the back side for each one of the knobs. Now you guys can see I went ahead and grabbed some extra wood so I could elevate my boards up so that my screws are not hitting the table at all. But I'm just going to go ahead and get each one of these guys started and then what we'll do is we'll flip over the board and we will twist on each one of the knobs. got the knobs on what I like to do is I like to use my um, screwdriver and I like to make sure that my knobs are in there nice and tight so what I'm doing is just holding the knob on one side and using you can see I've got one that falls off there but I'm just using that to really secure them in um, nice and tight so just going through and making sure I've got it all good to go and then next we'll be adding on our numbers. Okay, now comes the fun part, deciding how I wanted to put the numbers on my countdown tree. So I picked up some gift tags, some numbers, and a star, and I thought that I would start with that. I'm also using some of my double-sided tape, and then I also had some ties that I'm going to be using and some silver cardstock. So what I thought I would do with the tags is, and the silver cardstock is, have the number on one side, and then have the tag be on the other side. And that way, as you change the numbers over, you are kind of decorating your tree. So I went ahead and used some of this green and white string that I had on hand. And what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm going to sandwich that string in between the front and the back of the card. Now I'm playing with the length of the string because I want to make sure that it's going to hang nicely on my knobs. But as I remove my double-sided tape here, what I'm going to do is just put the string so it is right there, so it's just like a hanger, and then add the other, or the top, which would be the tag to it. And then the other thing that I like to do is I love using my We Are Memory Makers um, corner chopper, and I'm just going to round off the edges. Now, in some cases, I come really close to that string, um, but I just think it really adds a nice um, finish to my tags. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a bunch of the tags before I add on the numbers. And the reason being is I want to make sure my tags have a nice design going with my tree. If you did all of your tags exactly the same, you could put your numbers on first. But as you can see, I've got an assortment of tags there. So I'm cutting off the back. Now the reason why I didn't leave the back on and just use that as the tag is there was some writing on the back. And I also thought the silver looked really nice going with the numbers I was using. So you guys can use anything you want um, to add and to decorate your tree. The key here is that you use the numbers to have the 25 days leading up to Christmas, and then we can turn a decoration around and um, when we come to that day of the, of the month. onto our board and as you can see I've also added on all of the numbers and here let me turn these two back over so you can see it completed with our 1 through 25 and then as we start the 1st of December we'll be able to start turning over our numbers and decorating our tree and so on the 1st of December, I'll turn that over and I'll start decorating my tree. And as I cascade up, I will have a fully decorated Christmas tree. I can remember when I was young, I had a countdown to Christmas and it was so exciting every night to be able to remove, mine was a ribbon, I got to remove a ribbon and I knew how much closer I was to Santa Claus coming to visit. So this would be a great project to put together for your kids. Now, a couple things I want to show you guys is, in hindsight, I wished I would have spaced this a little bit differently because I did end up with a little bit of a hole right here. Um, but what I did is I just added an extra star here. I just improvised, okay? And I thought it was appropriate because that is Christmas Day. And then at the very beginning, I showed you guys I picked up this um, star at Dollar Tree. I have just um, added it to the top to top off our tree. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this Inspiration Friday project, putting together a countdown to Christmas with some reclaimed wood and some doorknobs. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I just love to hear from you guys. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And don't forget to check out my blog at funstuffcrafts.com for other DIY projects.